Welcome to the Appliance Analyst podcast. My name is Craig. I run a website called applianceanalyst.com and in it we have tons of information about how to solve almost every appliance issue and HVAC issue that you can have in your home. Today I'm fortunate enough to be joined by James Blackford. He is an appliance technician with over 16 years of expertise. He now works as a master technician for Square Trade, and we're talking about everything to do with dishwashers. So pretty much all of the best practices, everything you might want to know about the different brands and especially on troubleshooting lots and lots of different uh, issues that we get reports about from our readers to help you diagnose your own dishwasher or watch out for any problems in the future. So uh, yeah, please enjoy the conversation. Let's get started. What are the more common issues that you see or that you get called out for when it comes to dishwashers? And is there any sort of simple tips that homeowners can use to, to prevent being that common call out? Probably one of the most common, they're kind of tied. The most common is that the unit's not draining mm -hmm. and that it's not getting the dishes clean enough. I mean, I've, probably 90% of the times you have an issue, it's one of those. For not draining, sometimes it's something very simple. So you want to check your filter if your dishwasher has one. A lot of times it's just a removable deal right there inside. The other thing is if you recently had a garbage disposal installed, most dishwashers, the drain lines hook to the garbage disposal. On a new garbage disposal, disposal where that drain line hooks to not everybody has a dishwasher so from the store out of the box it's sealed off and so you want to take your drain line off where it hooks to the disposal just stick a screwdriver in there make sure it can go all the way through if not if you feel like it hits a wall just get a hammer tap it out it falls into the disposal that's fine hook the drain line up it's good to go I see that fairly often it's pretty surprising I'll ask them uh, you know, so your unit's not draining. Did you recently get a garbage disposal? And they'll be like, yeah, how'd you know? So, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, the wizarding tricks. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. A lot of times if your drain pump is bad, sometimes it will make like a humming sound or like a rattling sound. Sometimes it doesn't make any sound at all. Some are more easier to check than others. Some drain pumps, if you remove the access panel on the front bottom of the dishwasher, they are accessible where you can test to see if it's getting electricity with a meter. But if it's right there in front, typically a drain pump for a dishwasher is anywhere from, you know, 20 to $40. And most of the time, they have a locking clip and it just turns right off. And, and this is for like your Kenmore, Whirlpool, Maytag, that kind of variety. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. It's um, the other thing that can cause it not to drain is if you have so much buildup of grease in your drain line that it's just not going mm -hmm. anywhere. One thing that you can do, because it is very difficult to remove a dishwasher sometimes, is if you have a small snake, you can actually go from where your drain line hooks to your garbage disposal or underneath your sink and just kind of slowly start to run that snake down the drain line. If you start to feel a little resistance and you pull it back out, you notice a lot of grease on there, most likely that's what's going on. So just snake it as far as you can. Um, a cool little hack is if you don't have a snake, but you have an old cable line like to hook up a television to cable. You know, most of us are digital. We don't use it anyway. Yeah. So you find it in a drunk drawer and you literally just run that cable line down because it's thick enough, it's small enough, and mm. you know, you usually have it handy. So Right, yeah, that, a good trick for sure. And a, a good use for one of those old cables that, you know, are, are potentially sitting there for years. So in general, if it's not draining properly, it could be just the filter. It could, if, if the filter's okay, worth checking if any garbage disposal um, connections and then potentially like a, a sort of a grease buildup. And that grease is probably for like an older model if you've had it, what, like three, five plus years, something like that. Yeah, usually. And then also if you tend to not really knock a lot of the food off your plates and especially if you're cooking a lot of stuff that's high in the fat and yeah. everything, yeah, it really doesn't take long to build up, um, you know, especially if you don't clean your dishwasher regularly, mm -hmm. which is a pretty important deal too, to do that at least once a month or so with a cleaning tablet, which can be found pretty much anywhere. Gotcha. So uh, just to touch on, on general maintenance and things that you would recommend people to do in general, about once a month, use a dishwasher cleaning tablet, run it on empty and mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming maybe on the hottest setting or all right, what, what would you recommend? Yeah, so the longest setting, the hottest setting. So pots and pans, sandy rinse, high temp wash, whatever you can do there. Just make sure and deselect the heat feature because 
it doesn't have anything to dry, so it's just going to be a lot of heat that's not necessary. Gotcha. Yeah, that's the only thing you want to turn off is the heating element. But yeah, definitely once a month. It's great to do. It also helps to keep the, the smell down because that is kind of common among a lot of dishwashers is it'll start to stink after uh -huh. a while. So yeah, cleaning it regularly helps that. Once every six months, I would also recommend to sanitize the dishwasher. You'll typically find two types of cleaner. One is generally the tablets that you use once a month. The other is a sanitizer, cleaner, deodorizer, and it usually comes in a bottle you know, maybe about six inches high or so. You remove the cap and there's a wax seal on it. You put the whole bottle in your dishwasher, usually in the silverware compartment, top down, and run the full cycle. So once the water gets hot enough, it melts the seal and then it runs the solution through the dishwasher. And that, you know, once every six months or so. Yeah, gotcha. Just to touch on, on the filters as well as that. About once a month, you'd reckon, just to get in there and, and clean it out or... Yeah, once a month would definitely be a good call, probably before you do the clean cycle, mm -hmm. just so it's got really good water flow. Those filters, they're they're like a metal mesh, and so they're pretty sturdy. Mm -hmm. uh, you could even use a wire brush to clean them without any damage, but typically like a hard nylon brush is usually good. Just run it under hot water, and that'll usually scrub everything off of nice there. Nice one. Yeah. So that's all the sort of the regular maintenance to, to think about when it comes to dishwasher. There's a few other things. You want to check the seal around the door. Mm -hmm which is that black seal that goes around kind of the perimeter of where the door shuts onto it. And just make sure there's not any heavy buildup. Uh, you could take a, a warm rag, uh, you know, a wet warm rag, maybe with some vinegar, some kind of light solution cleaner on there, and just run it around the seal, make sure it's nice and clean so your door's got a real mm -hmm. good seal. And then, you know, sometimes, despite cleaning and despite everything, you can get some buildup, especially in the nooks and crannies. One big place that is really hard to keep clean unless you do it manually is when you open your door, right where your door meets the tub of the dishwasher, there's kind of a space. You could almost stick your fingers and, and run it in between the open door and the tub of the dishwasher. And within a few months, it's going to build up gunk and everything else. If you just run a rag down there, when you do the filter, when you do the cleaning, uh, it'll definitely help to especially reduce the smell because you, you can get a lot of stuff that grows there for years and never gets touched. Yeah, and I, I guess, you know, when you're whenever you're interacting with a dishwasher, the door's open and you're not seeing that part. Um, and so easy yeah, to exactly. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and a lot of times there's even kind of a, a small seal where the that bottom of the door goes. And so even if you're looking at it, you can't really see under it unless you kind of lift that seal up or whatever else. Right, so, yeah. yeah that's... Mm -hmm. I think you might have sent us a good picture of that. I'll, I'll try and overlay that on the video and, and things to show. But yeah, good, good shout. That's right, yeah. I guess just to talk through the, the main components of a dishwasher real quick um, before we start going into the, the troubleshooting. Touch on sure. I don't know if you'd want to walk through generally sort of how you picture a dishwasher and breaking it down and the different components. Understanding a dishwasher works it really helps to, to kind of self-diagnose if you're having an issue because there's some small differences between low and high-end foreign and domestic made dishwashers, but they all generally have the same parts and operate in the same way. So no matter if you've got three cycle options or 15 cycle options in a dishwasher, when you shut the door, it activates the, the door latch, door lock, door switch. They're all kind of called the same mm -hmm. thing. Once you shut that and you hit the start button, you have a control board that sends 110 volts of electricity to a water valve. When that happens, that water valve opens and it allows the water inside the dishwasher. As it's filling, some dishwashers, typically like the LGs, the Bosch, the GEs, Samsungs, they actually have a sensor that monitors that water level as it fills. Your Kenmore Whirlpool Maytag kind of variety, they don't so much have a sensor as they have kind of like they know how long it's filling and then they have a what they call a float switch. Every dishwasher has a float switch in one way or the other, and basically as the water level is increasing, as the unit's filling, it reaches a certain point where a switch, once that float activates the switch, it cuts power off to the water valve. So that not only tells us that it's full and ready to wash, but it's also kind of a safety measure just so it doesn't flood mm -hmm. the house. So once the dishwasher is filled, it then cuts off the power to the water valve and sends 110 volts of electricity to the wash motor. So pretty much the only thing the wash motor does, it turns 
as it does, it circulates the water through the spray arms. The majority of dishwashers now, because of how efficient they're making these dishwashers, the motor does not run the water through the lower and the upper spray arms at the same time. They have what's called an actuator, which will only run the water through the lower spray arm. It'll shift and then change it to where the water goes through the upper spray arm. So motors running, the actuator shifting from lower to upper. At some point, it will turn on the heating element it will open the soap dispenser, then it activates the drain pump, and then it does it all over again. So pretty much you've only got really, you know, seven, eight, nine components in a dishwasher mm -hmm. from the control board, the interface that allows you to hit the buttons, the wash motor, the dispenser, the water valve, the drain pump, and some type of water level sensor or switch and the door lock. And that's pretty much it. So if your dishwasher's not working or it's not cleaning or it's not doing something, it's only one of these seven eight nine components yeah it's easy to be intimidated when you look at the marketing of higher higher end appliances and sort of see all mm -hmm. these big technological features but it's great to as you say like break it down back to the basics of these are the components they just you know they all they all did the same thing at the end of the day i think you were saying with uh modern dishwashers that have the actuator i'm kind of picturing it as you know when when you see train tracks and the track just diverts the train this way or the other i guess it's the same with the water yeah. you're saying that the more modern ones are i guess most have that nowadays um, but that's what's causing much longer cycle times because it's only going you know one rack like the top rack or the bottom rack because right. I think some people are like, hey, my new dishwasher is taking way longer than my old one, right? Yeah, how is it efficient when it takes three <laughs> yeah, hours? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I remember you explaining that to me. And, uh, it's a good point to note for sure. Yeah, it is. It, it's really kind of crazy. The When you look at the older style dishwashers, I mean, the motors on those things, you know, it was just this 10 pound hunk of metal that, you know, you could throw an engine part inside a, my, a dishwasher and it would clean it. You know, they were hardcore, they got hot, yeah. they moved a bunch of water. And the difference with the newer motors, I mean, they are just a quarter of the size and use half the electricity. So yeah, they definitely don't have the strength to run both spray arms at the same time. So. Yeah, it makes sense. Because a lot of times if you have an issue where like only one of your racks are getting clean, like... You know, dishes on the top rack are great, but the bottom rack's not getting clean. And maybe that your actuator's stuck to where it's just not sending any water to the lower spray Gotcha, arm. right. Yeah. Yeah, interesting one. The only thing just to touch on again is all attached to a door sensor, which is just, you know, if you're, yeah, it just telling the, the circuit board if the door's closed or not, and then that, that can go as well. Yeah, and, and most dishwashers, they will have a green indicator light around the start button. And so typically, especially the hidden control dishwashers, which are just the top control dishwashers, you know, with the idea of when you shut the door, you won't see the buttons essentially. Mm -hmm. But yeah, with those, you would open up the door, you would select your cycle and options, hit the start button and shut it. And typically once you hit the start button, it'll blink. And then once the door shut, it'll be solid. So if you shut it, and it's still blinking. Pretty good indication that there may be an issue with that that door latch. Yeah. I keep jumping forward with the trouble. No, no, no. Things. Yeah. <laughs> All good. I, I figured we could touch on first, um, just to jump into the features of anything that you mm -hmm. think would be would be worthwhile in a, a dishwasher in terms of the more modern yeah. features or anything that's maybe more of a hassle or is only appropriate for very certain you know uses. I think one feature that may cause some issues with folks, depending on where you live. Because most everything on a dishwasher is pretty legit. It, it serves a purpose. But most dishwashers have an auto sense or auto wash or a smart wash mm -hmm. feature. That's really great because it actually monitors how dirty the water is. It monitors water temperature to where it'll actually adjust the wash time. Sometimes a lot shorter if your dishes are getting clean faster. Great way to save time and energy. But if you live in an area that has hard water, and if you're not sure, you can actually buy little test strips offline, and you just stick it in the water and it'll tell you how hard your mm -hmm. water is. The lens of that sensor, it doesn't take but a few months for it to start to build up with the, the hard water deposits and things like that. So it, it's not that accurate once it starts to get all that gunk on it so that is something to kind of look out for if you use a smart feature you know for six months and all of a sudden now everything's taking longer mm -hmm. you know you may just do like a light or a normal cycle but the hotter a dishwasher washes the better it cleans and the better it dries so features like sanitize or a sani rinse or a high temp wash especially if you're washing really heavily soiled dishes, it's really good to use those. Mm -hmm. 
it can add even an extra hour and a half onto a cycle, but beats washing them by hand, I guess. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And just to note on that, so in our, our washer episode, uh, we were talking about how you don't really need, to, you know, the, the soaps these days are made for lower temperature washes. Um, but with the dishwashers, it's still true that generally the hotter, the better. You know, if you're dealing with maybe greasy, greasy pots and, and things. Yeah, for sure. Most water heaters are set at about 120 degrees, maybe 125 on the higher end. And it is recommended, even in most user manuals for the dishwasher, to have it around 120. Mm -hmm. And most soap is designed to kind of function around that temperature. So yeah, you, you definitely want to make sure you have that. Make sure you've got nice hot water coming into the dishwasher. Typically, the kitchen sink and the dishwasher share a hotline. Mm -hmm. So if you're hot water on your sink is real nice and steamy most likely you're getting the right kind of temperature to the dishwasher yeah good stuff. now something interesting with the soap the softer the water is the less soap that you have to use so most dishwashers when you open the dispenser there's two compartments there's kind of a larger one and a smaller one the smaller one is like a pre-wash and the larger one is the main wash so if you live in an area with real soft good water you really don't need to fill them up. I mean, just, you know, maybe halfway or maybe even just throw one dishwasher tablet in there if you're just, if you're using the little pods to do it. But if you live in an area with hard water, not only do you want to fill those all the way up, but it may not be a bad idea to have a cup of vinegar, a small cup of vinegar in your dishwasher upright, mm -hmm. just so it could release as it washes to just kind of help clean and help dry. You definitely want to make sure that your rinse aid, that you do have rinse aid and that it's turned to the max with hot water, it, it's a lot harder for it to do its job well with harder water. Yeah, well, it, it's really um, one of these things that you, I guess if you're living in a place with hard water, you, you really start to feel the impact of it, especially as mm -hmm. it builds on all the effects of all your water intake sources, really. Yeah, uh, where I'm at here in you know West Texas, Eastern New Mexico area, when I did get one of those kits to measure how hard my own water was, it was like kind of off the really? chart. <laughs> yeah, it, it's so hard. What we find, especially when people don't do maintenance, is the holes on the spray arm they start to clog mm -hmm. just everything in general starts to clog and if it gets so it could get to a point where it's not really feasible to repair because it's just so mm -hmm. clogged up mm -hmm. and so yeah just without doing regular maintenance living in a hard water area you know you could reduce the life of your dishwasher easily by half. right yeah and just uh, as a, a general field you know how long would you expect a dishwasher to last you know at what point would you start recommending people to to maybe consider new ones you know, if you bought a dishwasher in the mid 90s, expect it to last a good 15 uh -huh. years. If you buy a dishwasher today, you will probably have a service call needed on it because there's some kind of issue. It doesn't matter if it's the cheapest or the most expensive dishwasher within probably five years. Wow. Yeah. Times have changed. And it may be a small issue, but something's going to yeah. happen. Is that just, I guess, a combination of not as robust parts and there's more kind of complex things going on? Yeah, exactly. You know, there, there's so many sensors dishwashers back in the day especially if it had a timer on it you could catch the thing on fire and it would run <laughs> because it's just uh, literally a motor and a timer so it's running if it's getting power it's yeah. running yeah th those are great the more high-end models and, and the more models with the bells and whistles those tend to have more inconvenient issues because of the amount of sensors it'll just give a code even if there may not be anything wrong with it and of course a customer is not going to know they'll have to call somebody because sometimes they can't even start it if there's yeah. a code so and then that, that could all just be due to a fault like a, a wrong or like a ghost sensor issue something like that yeah mm. yeah it, it could be nothing i i know there was a um quick story there was a, a Bosch dishwasher. Now Bosch is great. They're they're wonderful. They're quiet. They do an excellent job. They typically last a little more than most other brands. But when they break, they're very complicated to work on, and not many people do actually work on them because right. of that. Between me and my coworker, who's been a technician for over thirty years, we went out on this Bosch dishwasher over the course of probably two months. We installed just about every part on the dishwasher and we were still getting an error code that indicated it had a problem draining and we changed the drain line the drain pump the board just everything we could think of they eventually replaced the dishwasher 
I requested to have that dishwasher so I could completely gut it down to the frame and find out what was going yeah. on. Yeah. The whole time, the only problem with it, and it was literally coating out to where she couldn't use it, was there was a tiny plastic cover that was literally just a plastic cover. It was maybe a quarter of an inch thick, maybe two inches long, but it sat over where the water drained from the dishwasher to the oh drain hose. God. And it was just and a little <laughs> cover. And it was just a centimeter askew. It just barely popped out. But when it did that, it changed how many amps the drain motor required to drain the water that it thought there was an issue. Wow just because it had to try a little harder to drain the water. <laughs> and so that's like an example where a little too much technology can just cause yeah, a really problem. Yeah, oh man, that poor customer, that is brutal. <laughs> oh God, it was so, I, I couldn't believe it. I had to call my buddy as soon as I found yeah. out what it was. And, uh, yeah. Is there any extra sort of emphasis, emphasis you'd place for someone who's in a particularly hard water area? As in just, would yeah. you recommend kind of trying to get into the water valves or anything like that regularly? There is a screen where you're, house water hooks to the dishwasher it can get clogged it it's it's not really as common um and sometimes removing that can can open yourself up to leaks and stuff like that well the two things you want to do if you have hard water is before you put your soap in the dispenser just put a little bit of regular salt table salt whatever mm -hmm. you know maybe even just a teaspoon two teaspoons you really can't put too much i just kind of eyeball it every time i fill mine right. up but put some salt in there then put your soap and that's just gonna soften the water as it's washing and just let it work a little easier and then the other bit of advice is to get something maybe like a teacup or you know, maybe something that can hold a fourth a cup of water, a half a cup of water, fill it with regular vinegar and place it upright in the top rack. And so as it fills throughout the washes, it'll add water, it'll overflow. And so it's kind of slowly releasing vinegar throughout mm -hmm. the wash. And that also helps it uh, clean and dry as Great. well. Yeah, doing those two things make a really big difference for hard water areas. Nice one. Yeah, that's really important to know. You're actually making me think that maybe we should almost do a a series for just for people with hard water and um, for their dishwasher, their, their washer and any other kind of water, what are things? Oh yeah, for Maybe, sure. Yeah. Really critical to know. It's like, it's something that's fine until you realize it's gone too far. And then, yeah, as you were saying, mm -hmm. it's pretty much a, a gut out job. Most people know that they have hard water, especially if they grow up in an mm -hmm. area, but say you're moving to an area and you're not sure if you have hard water, a really good indication is look at any appliance or any faucet where water's coming out of it and you'll you'll see a bunch of white build up around it and you know that that's what the hard water the old uh the the water dispenser on the fridge you know you'll see just that constant stain of white you know coming down where the deposits are left and everything yeah so. yeah crazy the difference it makes i guess we can jump into the the fun part of um the troubleshooting the what would you do i think you were saying before about how a dishwasher might not be cleaning uh properly especially um well, so uh, we were talking about the draining yeah. with the drain pump and then the um, the drain line yeah. uh, as, as one of the most common. The other most common would be the, yeah, the dishes not cleaning, yeah. not coming out clean. For any technician going to a dishwasher that doesn't come out, it's not coming out clean, we almost put on our Sherlock Holmes hat because it could literally be anything on a dishwasher right. starting from the if the heating element is defective and it's not coming on it's not going to get the the water hot enough to effectively clean and to effectively dry the dishes so that's one thing we would check as far as a customer checking that at home it is pretty difficult because you do need to get into a service mode where you can activate the heating element but if you are able to do that where your dishwasher uh, hooks to household power. If you could put uh, a meter that monitors amp draw, which is usually a little amp clamp that goes around a wire, the heating element should be pulling anywhere from like six to 12 amps of electricity. And if you could verify that happens, 100% your heating element's good and the fuse in line with your heating element's good. Right. One of the most common reasons dishes aren't getting clean is just due to poor water flow. So a filter is a big thing. If your filter is completely clogged, your dishes aren't going to get clean. You also want to look at your spray arms. Most dishwashers, especially modern dishwashers, both the lower and the upper spray arm come off really easy. They just literally, you grab onto it and you give it a quarter turn and then it just comes right off. And so inspect all the holes. 
if it's really built up with a lot of that hard water buildup or just crud or whatever else is on there, uh, you may soak it overnight in like a vinegar type solution to try to break a lot of that up. Unfortunately, spray arms don't come apart. And so sometimes trying to get all of the buildup out of the spray arms, very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just so many particles that can build up inside. Fortunately, spray arms, I mean, they're, they're really not that expensive. They usually range anywhere from like 15 to $30. So it may be worth it just to buy some new spray arms. Definitely something you could do yourself. Yeah, you wanna make sure those are nice and clear. So the other thing is if you notice your dishes aren't getting clean, and when you open the door, and especially if you're using the, the soap pods, and you notice that it's maybe halfway dissolved and it's just kind of stuck in the dispenser, it means either you don't have good water flow, so the water from the lower spray arm isn't able to reach that pod to dissolve mm -hmm. it, or it could be that you're not getting enough water. So one way to determine that, especially if it, if it happens often, is to start your dishwasher as it's washing, when you open the door, there should be enough water flow where it kind of shoots out of the dishwasher. If it seems like it's really low, you could even take a pitcher of water and just add it to it and then shut the door and start it. If it dissolves the pod, you know that it's usually a lack of water issue. Right, yeah. Really nice hack to, to sort of figure that one out. Yeah, for sure. So, and, and if you add the water and it's still not dissolving the mm -hmm. pod, um, then you have a water flow issue. And if your, um, your spray arms are nice and clear, your filter's nice and clear, it means that your motor's worn and it's just not able to function good enough to circulate that water. Replacing the motor on a dishwasher is kind of a pain. It wouldn't be a pain if it was completely uninstalled, pulled out and on a pedestal for you to work on. <laughs> but getting mm. to it is the difficult part. For that, I would recommend calling somebody for it, but definitely expect to pay between parts and labor. Um, anywhere from 250 to 550 dollars. It just kind of depends on how difficult the installation is and how expensive the part. Gotcha, is. Gotcha. Yeah. So at that point, you're sort of weighing it up between the the age of your your dishwasher and things like that versus uh, getting a new one type of thing. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So another reason that your dishes aren't getting clean is your soap dispenser may not be opening at, at all, and typically soap dispensers they range anywhere from like 30 to 85 dollars. And most of the time, that is a repair you could do yourself if you could find a video on how to do it on your model. It's, it's really not that difficult. You essentially just have to remove the um, inner or the outer door panel, depending mm -hmm. on the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. And then it's right there. So, and I'm trying to think. So that is the, let's see, the heating element, the wash motor, the spray arms. That's pretty much it. Sometimes there's some weird things that could happen where your dishwasher isn't finishing cycles, mm -hmm. which... If it's not finishing cycles, it could be an issue with the door lock or the door latch or the door sensor. So you start it, it runs for 30 minutes, and then it thinks you open the door, and it won't start unless you actually hit the start button. So if you walk away from it and don't go back, it's only going to wash for X amount of time before it shuts down. So Right, and that could be a door sensor. I see what you mean. It's pretty much the whole list of components, you know, <laughs> worth checking. Yeah, and then like the actuator we had mentioned yeah. earlier, if, if one rack's getting clean and the other isn't, it could be the actuator, right. which that is another repair you do want uh, a technician mm -hmm. to do because it's difficult to get to that. You typically have to pull up the whole motor and sump assembly. And anything with potential uh, water... Uh, intake issues maybe with if it's not pulling in enough or is that where you're meaning with the water flow before yeah so if it's not filling up enough it definitely could be due to the water valve just maybe not opening fully to allow enough water in it could also be the water essentially coming from your house the plumbing mm -hmm. it could even be that you've had some work done recently and they turned the water off to the dishwasher and never turned it back on <laughs> yeah so definitely seen that really? a lot or somebody gets under there to do something yeah and and when that happens a lot of dishwashers will even try to start and run mm. and there's just no water in there so <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, uh, that, that's definitely good to Leads to one check. very confused dishwasher. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. So I, I guess that would almost be like when you're, when you're going to double-check your circuit breaker could also be worth double-checking your, your water valve for your whole house. Yeah, yeah most definitely. Um, you know, and, and when you are checking to see if your water is on, typically you will see mm -hmm. the water line because sometimes there's a couple of different valves and connections under a sink, and it could be kind of confusing. But you will actually see the water line. Typically, the dishwasher is to the right of the sink, and so there's there will be one water line that's actually going through the cabinet from underneath the sink 
to the cabinet where the dishwasher is. So if you just follow that line to the valve that it hooks mm -hmm. up at, what I would recommend doing, starting your dishwasher, shutting the door, and then going around and toggling that water valve on and off because it, if you turn it on all of a sudden you hear water start coming in then you know that it was off it's just kind of a another way to, to help you tell yeah okay yeah because yeah there's never really or there's often not like an on off sort of uh sign yeah it, it depends on how the plumber yeah. hooked it up and i've seen some weird stuff <laughs> yeah, out there i can imagine oh yeah really good to know and yeah sounds like i think we cover just about everything maybe drainage oh. So yeah, with the drainage, the big thing is is to check the plug on the on the garbage disposal. Mm -hmm. Most dishwashers, if they're not hooked there, they're hooked to a drain line on the sink. And so if your issue is every time the dishwasher drains, the sink fills up, and it seems like there's always some water left in the dishwasher, you've just got a plumbing issue. You'll need to call somebody to come and snake it because the water fills up in the sink and it will eventually drain back into the dishwasher. Dishwasher drain lines are supposed to have a little rubber thing. I'm having a brain I don't fart. Know, like a seal or like a... There's like a name yeah. for it. But yeah, it's one essentially way. a seal so water can only yeah, flow one yeah, yeah. way. But especially if it's an older dishwasher, that could kind of wear out. So if it's constantly filled with a ton of water, it will eventually start to fill your dishwasher mm -hmm. up. But yeah, other than that, typically if it's a drain pump, it's a drain line, and then everything beyond that is the, the household plumbing. So one way that you can be sure that if it's your dishwasher or your plumbing is just to get under your sink remove your drain line and just have a big bucket, put the drain line in the bucket and activate a drain. And that way you can monitor how it's draining. If you get just a tiny little bit of water coming mm -hmm. out, 100% you've got buildup in your drain line of your dishwasher. That's when you want to get your small snake or the cable line and run it gotcha. through. Gotcha, right. Yeah, good way to yeah. check. And I think it's something that most people might not feel comfortable with, but I imagine once you're actually doing it, you know, it, it's, it's simple enough. Oh, for sure, yeah, it's just one clamp holding the drain line on and then yeah just put it in a bucket yeah. and now beware it's gonna smell <laughs> especially if it's it's a grease build up and sometimes it'll just pop right out of there and, and it'll splash on you so so be careful it's yeah get your, get your gloves on so just moving on from that then if if someone's got a dishwasher that is often smelling particularly of a kind of sewagey smell what would you recommend looking in into for that so if it's at the point where it's smelling all the time, it will definitely take a few treatments of the tablet cleaner and of the sanitizer to really get a lot of that out. A lot of times too, if it's going into the garbage disposal, you're gonna have a lot of buildup in your garbage disposal, just all that slime mm -hmm. and the food and everything else. And they also do make garbage disposal cleaners, which are a tablet that you put in there, you turn on the water, you turn the disposal, it foams up and everything. So you may wanna consider cleaning that as well at the same time as you do your dishwasher cleaning and then other than that just leaving your door cracked just like on the front load washers and yeah that's pretty much it some dishwashers are better than others about how much water they retain because all dishwashers they can't drain out all mm -hmm. of the water you know just with the way the water pressure works and everything else there's always some water left typically your cheaper dishwashers are going to leave a little more water in there so they're going to be a little more stinky than some of the more high-end ones so makes sense yeah and just to to clarify there the the leaving the door open is just at the end of the cycle you want to leave leave the door open as much as you can for as long as you can really and a lot of times because of how they make the hinges even if you just pull the latch on the door and it just barely opens that's uh -huh. enough in fact some newer dishwashers they're starting to build a feature when the washer's done it has these little kind of little arms that pop out and will open your dishwasher for wow, you nice. just a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So that's dishwasher butler, you know, just, uh, so, so, yeah, yeah. Send, yeah, exactly. So if you're not there and it'll open it up a bit, uh, and, you know, let uh, it air out so and all smart. that. Yeah. It's pretty yeah, neat. One of those things that it's like, it must save so much in maintenance costs over time. Oh yeah. Um, and yeah, just to, to sort of explain there, I, I think we can maybe wrap these two into one. Cause you have when a dishwasher is sort of smelling more like sewage or off food, and then also uh -huh. related, um, or not not related, but can smell similar if it's smelling really moldy or musty. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just to say, like I think we were speaking more about the the sewage smell, f mostly with the garbage disposal or the filter going bad mm -hmm. and or things, and the mold and the must musty smells are a build up where you you really do want to leave your door open and I imagine similar to washers that's a lot of cleaning cycles and sanitiz sanitizing cycles as as the answer to that 
that's a definitely accurate. Yeah, especially that musty mildew smell. Yeah, that's typically inside the dishwasher where you just have that warm, moist environment just mm -hmm. building up yeah, in there. Yeah, perfect for it. Well, and then smells too. A lot of times if you smell like a burning mm -hmm. smell, like a chemical plastic burning kind of smell, it is typically where your household power hooks to your dishwasher in the little uh, panel box down below. Most of the time there's a connection that's worn out and it'll just short out one of those deals. And if you're comfortable with electricity just a little bit, it's very simple. Once your breaker is turned off and once you remove the lower access panel, that box is right there. And literally the fix is finding which wire is burnt, which you'll see it, and then taking the old cap off and then cleaning up the wire and then just putting a new cap on it and it's good to go. That's Sometimes you have to cut the wire back a little mm -hmm. bit if it's real crispy, but that's usually a real quick repair and we're talking you know, 20 cent electrical caps to, you know, connect the wires together. Yeah, wow, that's, that's great to know. Especially as, uh, you know, when we've spoken about a burning smell with a washer or a dryer, it's not often as easy a fix as that. Could burning smells, just to, there, there may be similar explanations as well, could burning smells also come from potential circuit board issues and things like that too? If I had to kind of put numbers on it, I would say that a burning smell probably like 85% of the time is where you're, the wires wow. connect to the household power yeah. dishwasher. I would say, so that's probably 80, I'll say 80%. And then the other, we'll say 15% is because a board is mm -hmm. shorted. You know, a main board, a power board, whatever kind of board. That's more relevant on dishwashers like 10 plus years old with the way that they've changed how these main boards are and where they're located. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if your dishwasher is over 10 years old, it, it may be a board, especially if it smells like it's coming from near the top of the door. And then I would say the other 5%, I'm already kind of forgetting the numbers I put out there, but uh, the other 5% it would be an issue with your heating element, whether some thin non-dishwasher safe plastic you put on the bottom rack and it just got too hot mm -hmm. or a plastic fork fell and it's underneath the heating element, maybe where it's not too noticeable. So yeah, I definitely get in there and kind of check and feel around the heating element and see if anything's touching that. Right. Got you. Yeah. That's super interesting with the wires though. Good to know. Yeah, I mean, I'd so often, I mean, that's, if there's a burning smell, that's the first thing I get down there and check. Yeah. And usually there's two screws on the lower panel that covers the bottom of the dishwasher. And then once that's out on the right hand side is a small gray metal box. That's usually two to four inches wide, a couple inches deep. And there is one, it's either a quarter inch or a five sixteenth screw. Once you remove the screw, the cover comes off and all those wires are exposed. So you'll see three wires coming from your household power and three wires that are part of your dishwasher wire harness there's a white a black and a green and your green is ground that's typically good to go usually it's either the white wire or the black wire you'll just see it's blackened and so if you just remove that cap clean it up put a new cap on there you're usually golden um, what I like to do in those cases, I'll even go a step further and I'll wrap a bunch of electrical tape around each of those connections just to kind of make sure it doesn't happen. Yeah, again. fantastic. You know, it sucks to have an issue, but if it's going to be an issue, better to have, have one of those than, yeah, than digging into the heating element and things itself. Yeah. You know, something like that, it's great too if you want to impress the significant <laughs> other. You know, dishwashers on the fritz, they get home from work and you've got to run a dishwasher. I mean, it just makes for yeah, a good night. Yeah, so. definitely good, good to have in the old knowledge bank. I'm going from, there's a good number of issues here, I think. Let's go for just, if your dishwasher is leaking, depending on either it could be through the door or coming out from the bottom or anywhere else that you might yeah. have seen that's common, what would your sort yeah. of go-to method be there? Definitely, um, like you said, it could be coming from the door or, le or, or seeping out from the bottom. So you definitely want to verify where it's coming from because it's going to make a huge difference on what you're checking and the potential mm -hmm. issue. Most of the time you'll notice that it's dripping from the door and sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it's worse, sometimes it's not as bad. But in almost every case where it's dripping from the door, it's because the the door seal that goes around all the way around the front of your tub that the door shuts on, it could be worn out. Uh, it could be torn. It could have a lot of that buildup on it that's never been cleaned off, so it doesn't have a really good seal. So if it looks like any of those things, the seal literally just pulls out. There's nothing to it. A brand new seal online, anywhere from 10 to $20. So definitely, even if you're not sure, it may be good to just try that, especially you do an Amazon Prime or something. It's here in two mm -hmm. days. Might as well give it a shot. The other reason it could be dripping from the door is if you've recently, say you moved your dishwasher around for anything and you put it back 
back in, you want to make sure that the dishwasher is not leaning forward too much. In a dishwasher, the tub that holds the water and everything in it, well, the lip on the tub comes up maybe half an inch. And so it doesn't take a lot, especially if it's leaning forward, as that water is moving inside for it to drip over the mm -hmm. edge. A good uh, rule of thumb with that is when you look at the sides of your dishwasher, where they're at in the cabinet, you'll be able to tell kind of which ways the dishwasher is leaning compared to kind of the wood beside it where it's mm -hmm. mounted. So you want the dishwasher leaning back just a little bit is fine, uh, but not leaning forward. And those are really the main things that cause it to drip. One really random thing that can cause mm -hmm. it to drip out the front is if your lower spray arm is damaged or cracked because it's typically two pieces of plastic in the factory that they kind of put together. And so if it starts to separate in the middle, instead of the water being forced top, you know, through all the holes, it's gonna be forced straight mm -hmm. out and it's gonna hit the door and it's gonna leak out. And so look, take a real close look at your lower spray arm too. Now, those are the main causes for the door. Trim. Yeah, definitely interesting. And that, could that be related as well to just going back to the hard water? If the, you know, the spray arm is starting to clog, then I guess the water could be going any which way. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, nice definitely. One. Um, uh, what would you think for the, if it's coming from the bottom and not the door? So probably 70, 75% of the time, if it's seeping out from the bottom, the actuator that we've talked a little bit about, because it's a motor that's powered, there is a stem that comes up through the sump, which is what holds the water. And then it connects to an assembly that moves. So as it goes through the sump, there's a little tiny itty bitty seal that's almost similar to the seals that are on like a faucet. If that gets worn out over time, it can develop a leak. And sometimes that leak could turn into quite a bit of a leak where it's going to mm -hmm. come out. So most often that's the reason that it's doing that. You know, again, you want to call somebody because that, that's kind of a pain in the butt repair. The other thing that could be causing it, and this is mostly in Frigidaire and GE dishwashers, the seal on the motor can actually leak, especially if it's an older GE or an older Frigidaire. Again, in that situation, you probably want to call somebody but unfortunately, most of the time when it's seeping out from underneath, it is more of a major issue. If you can access a control panel and remove it and look under there, sometimes though, it is, it is as simple as where your household water line hooks to your water mm -hmm. valve, it's leaking mm -hmm. from there. So that may be as simple as turn the water off underneath your sink, you know, unscrew it, the water line, clean it up a little bit, maybe with a wire brush, put some new plumber's tape on there and then connect it back that may stop your leak. So definitely look under there and see if there's anything obvious. Yeah, right, gotcha. Super interesting. So it, it does seem that any door leaks are more kind of minor and just a little hassle, whereas mm -hmm. leaking from the bottom could be a, a very tricky seal to get to. Also good to be aware that both are, you know, not impacting the actual dishwasher's performance. It's just sort of, you know, mm -hmm. causing a mess every time you turn it on. So it's, it's only, you know, if you can put up with it, then, you know, with some towels and stuff, it can, I guess, wait a while. You know, there's no rush to replace it. Right, yeah. Yeah, and, and underneath, you know, you, you want to see, because I've seen some cases where it's leaked for a year, three <laughs> years, but it's never been bad enough to where it's actually come out from yeah. underneath. So oh, by the wow. time that people do notice it, especially if they have wood floors, it's like major floor yeah, damage. Yeah, so. you might almost, I guess, smell the floor damage before the, the, uh, the leak, or before you, you see the water coming right. out, you know. Yeah, and, and if you ever notice any tiles or, or if you have wood flooring, if you ever notice that it kind of starts to seem like there's any raised spots anywhere near the dishwasher, that could be an indication you're, you're having some, some water leakage there. Yeah. So not a bad idea to check under the sink, check under the dishwasher, make sure you don't have any water yeah, leaks. Yeah, yeah, really uh, good to know. What if your dishwasher keeps tripping your breaker and however form that might take? The first thing you want to check, just like with a burning smell, you want to make sure that your wires where your dishwasher connects to household power, uh, that it's nice and clean, nothing looks burnt, nothing like that. If that checks okay, then most likely it's going to typically happen when the heating element's activated. The, the wash motor really doesn't pull hardly any amps, so even if it goes bad, it's unusual for it to trip the breaker. So you want to make sure that your heating element looks okay, just visually inspecting it when you open the door and you look inside. If you can, you know, at that point, if it's tripping the breaker, I would recommend just pulling the whole dishwasher out, disconnecting it, and then you can lay on on its back and just really closely inspect the underside of the heating element, the wires that are connected to it, and just overall, just look at all the wires and see if something 
uh, looks blackened or burned because when that element activates, it's probably when it's tripping the breaker. Yeah. And yeah, that that can be a little more difficult, but th that's the most likely scenario. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. Sounds good. Just continuing on with the the fun dishwasher troubleshooting, mm -hmm. trying to help anyone out there who's got uh, any of these particular issues. Going straight down to the the dishwasher won't turn on at all. No lights, mm -hmm. no sound, anything like that. Where would you be sort of investigating first? The very first thing that'd be good to check is to make sure the garbage disposal comes on. They typically are on the same circuit. So if your garbage okay. disposal doesn't come on either, um, easy fix, go check out your breaker box and it, it may be as simple as just flipping the switch. Now, if your disposal does come on and you confirm you've got power to the dishwasher, you had stated that, you know, if there's no lights, there's no nothing. The next thing that you want to check, you want to make sure that you turn the breaker off to the dishwasher. You're going to want a meter to make sure you don't have any power to the unit. Remove the access panel in the front on the bottom and right there at the junction box, you want to remove, it's typically a quarter inch or a five sixteenth screw and then you can check the connections where the wires from your house meet the wires at your dishwasher. Sometimes it's really obvious. Sometimes you'll see one of the connectors are just totally burned up. You know, in that case, it's as simple as just removing the connector, cleaning up the wire, and putting it back together. If everything looks good there, what you want to do is safely pull the wires out enough to where you can put your meter in, and you want to put one meter in the black and one meter in the white. Set your meter to measure AC voltage and turn your breaker on to see if you have around 110 volts of electricity. If you've got it there and you still don't have any lights, you don't have anything, I would say probably about nearly 100% of the time your issue is going to be in your main control board sometimes there's a fuse on that control board that could be bad which would be a lot cheaper depending on your dishwasher the location of that control board is going to vary on most of your kind of domestic dishwashers your Kenmore Whirlpool Maytag that control board is typically in the upper panel where your buttons are in your LG's and some other brands sometimes you actually do have to pull the dishwasher out to access the control board because it's, it's somewhere on the bottom, mounted usually on the right side. But yeah, if you can access it, that's going to be the issue. The control boards range usually anywhere from about $80 to about $300, just depending. And if you can access it, they're, they're fairly simple to change. So that's definitely something you can do yourself. Okay, so maybe a more expensive part, but could be worth uh, giving it a shot for a homeowner. That's yeah, yeah, for sure. Right. The hardest part is accessing it. And, you know, you'll definitely want to see if you can find maybe a video of a similar dishwasher on how to do that. Some of the ones where you do have to pull the unit out, it can be more of a pain because you've got to uninstall your dishwasher, but it's right there. You don't have to remove any parts from the dishwasher. You'll see where that control board is mounted. Samsung's, ironically, they're typically one of the harder dishwashers to work on but one of the easier ones to change the control board because when you remove that access panel, the control board's literally staring right at you. Oh, wow, nice. And um, so, yeah, that's probably the only repair that a Samsung's <laughs> going to be an easier repair on. Gotcha. I'm sure someone out there is sitting there with a Samsung not, not going to turn on like, ah, perfect, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good to know. And I guess it's also, you know, as you're saying, if the hardest part of ac is accessing it, you can, you know, mm -hmm. if you're in this situation, you can try it yourself and see if you can access the control board and then a safe enough bet to buy a new one. And just, just to touch on going, just circling back to where you started, just touching on if it's the circuit breaker, if it could be the circuit breaker, but it, it's not always, you know, it might not be shown as off if you want to touch on that again. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, with the circuit breaker, uh, once you find which one it is, if it looks like it's on, you do want to turn it off and then on because sometimes it appears that it's good, but you've got to reset it. And when that's the case, you'll feel when you turn it off, you don't have any resistance. When you turn it back on, you'll feel that click. Yeah, gotcha. So just a good double check before you start taking mm -hmm. apart your, your appliances there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you save a lot of time if that's all it is. Yeah, nice. So say the dishwasher does have, you know, some lights and stuff on, but it's not actually mm -hmm. able to start. And maybe mm -hmm. you can select, get up to the point of selecting the, the program and things, but it's just refusing to actually function. Mm -hmm. Is there any sort of normal cause for that? Yeah, so you, you want to make sure that you can get to the point where you can select the function. If you try to select the cycle and nothing's really happening, or maybe all the lights are blinking, or maybe one of the lights are blinking, most likely the child lock or the control lock is on. Definitely check that. Most dishwashers do indicate on the button panel which is the child or the control lock, and it's a button you typically have to press, you know, three to six seconds or so. So try that first. Um, 
but yeah, if you're able to select the cycles, everything's lighting up, you hit the start button, you shut the door, and nothing happens. You want to pay attention to the lights because if they start blinking after a few seconds, it doesn't realize that the door's actually been shut. So most often that's going to be a, a problem with either the door strike or the door lock or, or latch. Kind of same deal. If that's the case, pretty much your, your troubleshooting kind of stops there because it's a pretty straightforward repair. It's usually not that difficult either. To access that the cost of a new uh, door latch and a door strike are you know anywhere from 30 to 80 bucks so it's a fairly inexpensive repair and doesn't need so to, it's all on the door you don't need to start breaking down the the main part of the appliance yeah most of the time the door latch lock assembly is on the door itself on some units like GE the strike is on the door uh, but whether it's on the door or the dishwasher either one's a pretty simple fix let's see so that's if the lights are blinking there's kind of some other things to look for if you make your selection you hit the button you shut the door nothing's blinking and then it's just kind of sitting there for a while. Typically what happens is it doesn't fill. And so if it's sitting there for a while, you don't really hear anything, then you hear the motor turning and you're, nothing's getting clean, nothing like that. You want to open it up and make sure it's actually filling with water because that's another thing that could happen. Yeah. Whereas, so everything just looks like it's going and then the water's just not getting in there. Right. Yeah, you'll hear the motor moving and everything and yeah, just nothing's getting clean, so. Yeah, interesting. And is that typically a water supply issue? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's typically the water valve. And again, that can usually be accessed from the front. Some models are a little more difficult to get to. This is a case where Samsung is definitely the culprit of... It's one of the harder ones to change the water valve. Right. But as far as the valve itself, it's typically just one wire connection and then the water connection. So, nice. and, and mind that part's, you know, 20 to $60. Yeah. Nice one. Okay. And if, say, you're st still sticking on the, the door, keeps unlocking during the cycle, is that just typically a bad door latch? For the most part, it is a bad door latch. The, the connections on there just get worn and it doesn't stay shut. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, it could be that it's a bad your door uh, hinges essentially those don't really go bad on their own if you've got little kids there's a better chance it could go bad because if the doors open sometimes they'll sit or try to jump on it so right. if that's happened then yeah you'll probably have to change out your uh, your door hinges but um yeah yeah that's typically all it is is the latch okay yeah so so try not to stand on your dishwasher door and you should be good yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah good yeah that's a good thing there yeah because yeah. sometimes changing those hinges are kind of a pain too so okay right and is that just just access or is it i guess can get really fiddly the the way that to access the hinges on some of them are, are kind of difficult because you need to remove the door panel and the control panel and the way that the hinges mount, they're, they're pretty thick metal. There are these little metal tabs that keep the door and the hinge assembly mounted to the frame of the dishwasher. So when you go to kind of pull up on your door, you'll, you'll feel like there's a little bit of play. What's preventing that from coming off are these little tabs that you literally need to get a big, thick, flathead screwdriver and just kind of bend those. It's like a little hook. You need to physically bend it out on either side so that you can remove it mm -hmm. and yeah i mean you know sometimes it takes a hammer and a flathead they're they can be pretty difficult to manipulate yikes yeah i imagine a, a second pair of hands is pretty useful as well uh, when it comes to oh that. yeah yeah am i right in saying that on some other appliances the the door set, um, latch might be a lot easier than a dishwasher yeah, especially like, uh, you know, washers, typically there's a little less involved in changing the door lock or the door latch assembly. Yeah. Um, you know, dryers typically are a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. With a dishwasher, it can get a little more technical, a little more complicated. Okay, yeah, so something to watch out for. And then going into, um, I think we'll start going into the different uh, sounds that a dishwasher can sort of make to t that might mm -hmm. be letting you know something's going wrong. Mm -hmm. So if there's any just general sort of rattling that you regularly hear, you know, it's not like a one-time thing. It's pretty much every time the dishwasher's on, there's a sort of rattle going on. Is mm -hmm. that a common issue at all? Yeah, usually a rattling happens during a drain cycle. The way that a drain pump is actually kind of made up, it's essentially like a little metal cylinder basically with a plastic, almost like a paddle connected to it. And so as that motor spins, it moves the shaft, which moves the paddle, which forces the water out of the dishwasher. Over time, that plastic paddle can start to come loose from the metal shaft. Mm -hmm. And so that rattling you're hearing is that kind of paddle kind of slipping and that drain pump going bad. They can sometimes work for a few days or even a few months like that, but eventually it will stop draining. 
Um, so that's a pretty clear sign it's the drain pump. The, and the motor can do the same thing. The motor is essentially the same kind of part with a motor and a paddle thing, but um, the, d the drain pump's definitely more common. Mm -hmm. And if someone's in that situation and they're hearing a rattling, it would it be sort of, it sounds like it wouldn't exactly be urgent to fix it if as long as the dishes are getting clean and stuff properly. It's sort of, at some point, I'm more critical issue is going to happen but whether you fix it doing something now is probably going to be the same job as doing it further down the line or is it worth doing worth getting a repair done as soon as possible right so yeah it definitely won't cause more damage if you don't do it right away gotcha. yeah it's, like you said it's the same repair whether you do it then mm -hmm. or whether you do it later a good reason to check it if you start hearing it if you remove the drain pump sometimes there's actually some debris that's in there so it could be a little piece of glass or, or something that's just not able to go through the drain mm -hmm. and so by just at least checking it if you remove that debris it could pre prevent you from having to replace the drain pump yeah, getting in there and having a really good check. Yeah, makes sense. Probably good for almost any issue. Uh, as yeah, well. yeah, because, well, and most of the time when you remove the drain pump, you, it'll just fall out right away. Right. Um, for a dishwasher, it's typically a little piece of glass or something, so. Mm. Okay, yeah, interesting. Continuing with uh, dishwasher sounds, any sort of um, experience with a more of a, like, a louder banging sound? Usually a, a banging sound is if the dishes aren't loaded properly and you actually have something that's getting knocked around. Or if you have like a really tall pan mm -hmm. and you have it in the lower rack and it's actually hitting the spray arm from the upper rack turning. Yeah. So, yeah, fortunately most of the time that's just kind of adjusting your dishes or the position of your top rack because those typically do have two positions. So. Okay, so you can, you can actually change and just hopefully uh, give it enough clearance. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Nice one. One of the last sounds would be if it's always seems to be beeping for whatever reason. This could be beeping during the cycle or, you know, beeping at any other time. Is that uh, generally tied to any known common issues? The most common issue with the beeping is the interface, especially, you know, most dishwashers nowadays have kind of a touch interface mm -hmm. and a lot of them are really sensitive. And so when the interface or the, you know, button control panel when that starts to develop an issue, it'll just randomly beep. It, it thinks that somebody's pressing the buttons. It's more of an annoyance uh, rather than something you need to repair right away. Just because those control panels, they range anywhere from, I'd say probably around $100 to, you know, $300, $400. Right. So if all it's doing is beeping, yeah, it's, it's not too much to worry about right then. Cool. Yeah, good to know. Um, so something, it's, it's one of these sort of put up with it rather than pay for a whole person to come out and fix replace the whole thing just to stop a few beeps oh yeah and you know sometimes it goes away sometimes it kind of that issue will fix itself and yeah you know won't, won't happen again yeah, so makes sense and i guess you could potentially um just go go over it with maybe some white wipes and just try and just clean down the interface um anywhere that you're interacting with it um could help reduce the anything that could be triggering it yeah, for sure. And and on that note, too, if you feel comfortable accessing inside the control panel and the door panel, you can unplug and then, you know, replug in the connectors on the inside. Okay. And sometimes that'll fix it as well. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, so it could just be like a faulty connection in there or like, a, mm. yeah, makes sense. One sound that I do hear quite often in the field uh -huh. is just that the dishwasher sounds like it's running loud yeah. or when it's washing, it's like a loud buzzing or just kind of like a, an electrical motor type sound. That is always an indication that your wash motor is going bad, but that's another one of those things. If it's cleaning the dishes, just leave it alone because the wash motor is, is really where, unless you really have a knack for repairing stuff, you want to get a professional in to do it because there's a lot that can happen that just, you know, makes it a whole lot worse. Mm -hmm. That repair typically ranges anywhere from 300 to $700. So right. yeah, you're in the realm of the new dishwasher. So if you hear a buzzing and the dishwashers are still, or the dish are still getting clean, if you can live with it, you know, live with it. So yeah, it makes sense. Maybe start uh, putting, putting some pennies in the piggy bank for a new one. <laughs> in a, in a few yeah, months. exactly. Yeah. After the cycle of a dishwasher ends, you open the door and the plates are still like absolutely soaking um, you know a, a little bit of dampness is expected but you know just soaking wet what would you you start to look at to diagnose for that yeah so you definitely want to start out with like the kind of good habits of, of a dishwasher so mm -hmm. I think we had talked a little bit earlier about putting uh, some vinegar in <laughs> putting some uh, vinegar in a cup uh -huh. 
you know, letting that run through because that does help to clean the dishes and to dry the dishes. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that your rinse aid is not empty and you want to make sure that it's turned up to max. Um, so on your dispenser, there's uh, usually a little cap that'll untwist and you'll see kind of a, a little indicator in there from like zero to max or zero to five. And you could just stick a little screwdriver or something in there. You got little fingers, you could just turn it up. Make sure that's full. You want to turn the water on uh, at your kitchen sink on hot and make sure that you're pretty close to 120 degrees. That's usually 120 degrees is you could stick your hand under there for a second or two and it's too hot and you got to pull it out. That's about 120 degrees. Right. Those are a lot of the big things because the hotter the dishes get during the wash, the better they dry. I would have initially you know, started thinking that it would have been some sort of a drainage issue or maybe spraying too much or something, but it, it, it's interesting to know that it often or could be solved by just um, yeah, checking your rinse aid, checking your, that the water's getting hot enough and things like that. Yeah, for sure. If you do all that and all that's good and it's still not drying the dishes, it, it is typically a heating element issue. If your water's hot coming in, it may do a decent job of, of cleaning, but it doesn't dry that well. So to check the heating element, there's a couple of different ways. Unfortunately, the terminals to actually check it with a meter are usually in the very back of the dishwasher so it's really hard to get to without pulling out but if you do pull your dishwasher out it's easy to access it all you do is just set your meter to the resistance setting and put it on each terminal and you should get some kind of reading it's going to be anywhere between say like 4 to 14 ohms and your heating elements good if you measure it and it's completely open you don't have any kind of reading heating elements definitely bad and at that point if it's pulled out, it's super easy to change, and we're talking, you know, 20 to 50 bucks usually for a new heating element. Yeah, you'd think it would be one of the more expensive uh, elements because it's, you know, I guess heat is always one of the more expensive parts to run. But yeah, oh yeah, um, great that it's, you can often find one for quite cheap. Yeah, the only time that it can get expensive is your, you know, LG and your Bosch and and brands like that. On a lot of them, they've started incorporating the heating element literally built into the wash pump assembly. So if you have a dishwasher, when you open the door and you look inside, if you cannot see a heating element, it's one of the dishwashers where it's incorporated. And, you know, again, you are you can still check it, but yeah, if it's bad, then you may want to call somebody to come and change that whole assembly. Mm -hmm. And that one, if it is, I guess if it is all like tied in together, it might be a, a little harder to get to for, you know, it might be a bit more expensive, mm -hmm. I would imagine, or? Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, it's going from a, you know, 30 to, or 20 to 40, $50 element to a whole wash pump heat assembly, which, you know, just the part itself, 180 to $450 maybe. Yeah, and then plus yeah. any labor and stuff, You yeah, again, could be oh, yeah. one of the, might be better to go new. Uh, options. Yeah, yeah, because technicians, when it comes to those brands, they, they will usually charge a little more just because they're a lot more difficult to work on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. One of the last main ones would be um, if the dishwasher keeps just sort of stopping it, you know, it'll start, the cycles get going and things, but then at some point it'll just stop. Is that a typical issue you'd find? Yeah, most of the time it's a door lock issue or a door latch issue. Every once in a while it could actually be the connections where, you know, like the, the terminal type connections, if they're loose or if they're kind of burnt up or damaged in any way, as soon as the dishwasher gets to the part of the cycle where it activates the heating element, it draws a lot more power. And so if your connections are faulty, it could just cause the whole thing to shut off. Definitely want to check that. Mm -hmm. And if, if you've tried the door latch, the connections look good. The, the only thing that could really cause that to happen is the main board. Right. So. Okay. And then, yeah, going back to how to access the main board and stuff from before. I was just wondering to get your thoughts on a, a dishwasher model with a hard food disposer. I know that some people, you know, like to opt for, the, opt for these. I don't know if you're, you're familiar with them, um, how sort of effective those are versus just properly cleaning the plates, I guess. So uh, you said a dishwasher with like a disposer, something inside or? Yeah, it's essentially like a, a mini garbage disposal, or I think it's meant to be. And they're often, mm -hmm. I think, not as good and maybe the... the the fins aren't as robust. Uh, just would you know? Are those common? I'm just curious because we, we've done a few articles about them, but um, yeah, just to touch on them and if there's any sort of common issues you'd you'd see or, or think you might see with them. That type of feature was really kind of introduced prior to the dishwashers that have a removable filter. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, prior to that, there was really nothing the water was passing through before it would get around to the wash pump assembly. And so they really advertise like, hey, this has this disposal feature. And so the blade on it, I'm trying to think of something to compare it to. So, well, it's thin enough that you could just take it and just bend it very easily with yeah. your fingers. And it's typically only two blades and they're maybe, oh gosh, half an inch long, three quarters of an inch long. Yeah. And they're really not strong at all. So yeah, if you're putting anything, you know, thick down there, it's just going to get stuck somewhere during the wash. Yeah. yeah. Could be dangerous. Even like the sort of mindset of, oh, I've got this, you know, it's totally fine. Let me just chuck absolutely everything into it. And then you just yeah. immediately clog the whole system. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, when, when we would see that, especially prior to the filters, yeah, it would be to completely disassemble it and to clean everything out. And yeah. Yeah. So it was quite a bit in labor for, for that uh, decision that they make there. So <laughs> Yeah, and so not not a recommendation for sure. When it comes to to brands uh, with dishwashers, would there be a, a main brand you'd recommend? One that you trust? One that's easier to repair with? What would you? Maybe if we just go for an overall recommendation first. Yeah, so overall recommendations for a lot of different reasons. Uh, Maytag is really good right now. They're more of a domestic type of brand a lot of repair companies will work on them but they're also integrating some of the new designs and features on on some of the newer dishwashers but they're not going way super overboard so they're more advanced they still do a job good job cleaning but they don't have a million different sensors and things that could go bad and all these extra components and features that that are going to break i would say overall recommendation of maytag affordability features uh, they have a really nice design they're pretty decent to work on in most people will work on them so i'd say that's overall recommendation yeah good stuff i guess it makes a big difference as well in terms of how easy it is to, to access and things so for recommendations or maybe brands that you are, are happy to see when you turn up to a dishwasher repair repair job um what are some of the easier ones to work on Definitely all, all the domestic ones. So the, the Kenmore, Whirlpool, uh, Maytag, even the, the KitchenAids, those are a little more fancy. They've got a little more features, but they're still built mindfully of the fact that they will eventually have to be worked on. Mm -hmm. And then Frigidaire, I, I would say say those are probably all the ones that, yeah, tech would be happy to see to work on, yeah. Yeah, and going for the, the other side of the spectrum, what sort of... You know, if you own one of these brands, what might you, you, you know, you maybe need to be prepared to pay a little more in labor if, it, if they're more complex and stuff to work on. What would you, what would fall into their, that category? Yeah, definitely. So, uh, yeah, Samsung, LG, Bosch, and uh, Fisher Packle. I mean, that, that Fisher Packle with the, with the drawer design. Right. There's, you're going to find even less people to work on those. So. <laughs> yeah. What sort of a, yeah. a not worth the call out type? type deal yeah i mean though you know you've got one of those hopefully you live in a bigger city and mm. you've got money you don't mind spending on having it repaired uh, they're really convenient they're quiet you could fill it up with just a couple of plates bowls and cups and they're very energy and water efficient mm -hmm. yeah just you know be aware uh just hope nothing something goes wrong. Happen. yeah <laughs> interesting that it's typically the bigger brands that have the I don't know, the more features and the more marketing like Bosch and LG and Samsung that mm -hmm. can also bite you a little bit if you, if you need a, a good repair on them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, like Bosch, Bosch is great. Uh, they are typically a little more expensive, mm -hmm. but they're one of the quietest dishwashers. They're very sleek. They're, they have a very simple but elegant design. They do a fantastic job cleaning, but they are a pain to work on. Yeah. Um, so that maybe would Bosch be the recommendation for sort of if budget isn't an issue, you don't mind if it does need a repair to fork out a little bit extra that that's probably the best best one to work or to live with. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Bosch is kind of one of those brands where when someone has a Bosch, that's all they ever want is a Bosch. Right, you get used yeah, to the for, standard. Yeah, definitely. You, you know, kind of a, a quick anecdotal thing about working on the different brands. Yeah. So let's say you know that your drain pump is bad. You looked on eBay, it's 25 bucks for a pump, so you want to fix it yourself. To replace a drain pump on a Kenmore Whirlpool Maytag, one of those variety, it's literally two screws or two clips to remove the access panel, one wire connection, and then a clip that you press with your finger, you turn the drain pump off and you pull it. That's the extent of the repair. A technician yeah. could do it in, in less than five minutes. If you do the same repair on a Samsung dishwasher, you've got to uninstall it, which means you're disconnecting it from the cabinet, you're pulling it out, you're removing the water line, the power line, the drain line sometimes if it's not long enough, pull it all the way out, you literally lay it on its back, 
remove an access panel at the very bottom of it and have very limited room to access the drain pump. It start to finish one and a half to three hours. Wow. Much more difficult for the exact same repair. Yeah. And so that's kind of the difference between the domestic and, and kind of like the foreign type made brands. Yeah, definitely. And it, it also totally puts it out of the range of, of uh, an average homeowner to do it. I, I've got a, a home warranty for my appliances just because I know parts can be really expensive. Uh -huh. And if I had one of those dishwashers and my drain pump went out, I'd call it in and hope that somebody <laughs> else was assigned beside me just because I wouldn't have to mess with yeah. it. So, yeah. <laughs> You just uh, yeah, you'd know the, the what the what the technicians in for when they turn up. Yeah. <laughs> you could probably make them really jealous, you know. Like, well, you do that, I'm off to p repair a Kenmore, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh nice. Um, when it comes to features that are coming up on on dishwashers and things, would you say that there's any that you would recommend, or any that you think are more of a hassle than they're worth, or could overcomplicate things? Yeah, yeah. So dishwashers are a lot better than washing machines, and most of the features that they have on a dishwasher do actually serve a purpose. Nice. So that's good. I think one of the the best features that more and more dishwashers are incorporating is the option to choose either just the lower rack or just the upper rack. And so especially if people are mindful of their water usage and electrical usage and they don't use a lot of dishes, they could feel better about just doing a small load if they're only using one rack. So that's a that's a really great feature. Yeah, it makes sense. I think as well it's something that many people don't don't know, but yeah, you can absolutely just only choose one. So say you're living by yourself or uh, your partner's away for a week or something like that, you only need half the dishwasher, yeah, you can absolutely just, just put on a half load. You don't have to sort of be there umming and eyeing about, do I put it on, do I not, do I need to do it myself, uh, that kind of mm. thing. Yeah, because nobody wants to wash dishes by hand. So. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So the, the other feature uh, that's good for areas with soft water is mm -hmm. the auto wash or the smart wash mm -hmm. because it does change the cycle time based on how dirty the water is, essentially. And so if you're really good about pre-washing and rinsing your dishes before they go in the dishwasher, the smart wash or auto wash cycle may cut the wash time literally in half. Right, um, yeah. How does that measure that, just out of curiosity? Is that a, a sensor in terms of the, in the drain? It, it's like an optic type sensor. Mm -hmm. If you were to pull it out and look at it, it, it almost looks like the, like the head of a submarine that you see on like a TV okay. show. Because it's like a kind of a clear plastic dome. Uh -huh. And it's, uh, it's, well, it's really hard to explain. But yes, and I don't know how it does it like on a, on a kind of micro level. But it, it basically can measure the, well, how dirty the water is essentially, yeah, I guess, yeah. how cloudy it is, maybe how light can travel through between two sensors or something. Yeah, it's, mm. it's really interesting how that works. If you have hard water or you live in a place with hard water, that sensor after a few months doesn't really work because it gets covered with hard water on the lens that kind of build up in debris and stuff. And so that smart wash may take as long as a regular wash because it can't really detect that well anymore. Right, yeah. And I guess with, with modern ones, probably with this feature, those regular washes can take quite some time. If it has a, a smart wash feature, probably, you know, you're saving, saving a lot of time and energy just by pre-rinsing your dishes properly and things. Yeah, for sure. Most of the dishwashers now, especially if you select any like a, you know, heated wash or uh, sandy rinse or pots and pan cycle, you're easily looking at, you know, up to three hours and more for a wash cycle. So yeah, long time for a, for a machine to be humming away in your home, really. Anything else to add, do you think? Let's see. Um, one thing is um, with uh, like large knives and stuff like that, yeah. sometimes they're too big to put in the silverware rack. So a lot of folks will lay them across the rack. Just kind of be mindful when you're laying a knife across the top rack. Every time that you're putting it against there, especially if your rack is coated, it'll kind of cut away at the coating and right. it could prematurely start to rust the rack. So be mindful when you're putting sharp things against the rack that you're doing it in a way to where it's not going to start to kind of cut into that coating and start to rust it out. Yeah, definitely. And um, from what I understand, I, I'm not much of a knife guy, but from what I understand, with if, if it's a sharp knife you care about, probably best to hand wash it because a dishwasher can right. sort of uh, wear it down a little bit so you'll lose that sharpness mm -hmm. a bit quicker. Big knives, not so great in there. Yeah. Any other common sort of loading mistakes or things that you that might cause issues that people should know about yeah yeah as far as loading one thing to be aware is just realize that the where your water is coming from you know underneath from that spray arm if you have like a bowl or something and you angle it towards the door 
as that water hits it, if it's shooting straight towards the door, it could cause the unit to leak through the front. Yeah, right. And so, yeah, if you're having that issue, just kind of look and see how it's loaded there. Yeah, um, which really speaks to, you, you know, you want everything sort of facing towards the center and, and towards each, each other. Right, yeah, yeah, or to the sides or whatever. Yeah, yeah it's just not towards um, the door, <laughs> pretty much. Right, yeah. right, yeah. Uh, and also, if you have like a, a large plate or a pan, you don't want to put it in there in a way where it's going to block the water from the bottom getting to the soap dispenser. You know, sometimes with larger items, people will put it there because it's out of the way of the upper spray arm, but then you're blocking the soap dispenser, so it's not going to effectively, you know, dispense and distribute throughout the wash. Yeah, so those um, those big large pans and things best at the back, right? Yeah. Um, and just yeah. Yeah, line it up against the back and out as, as out of the way as possible. And then another issue, so so this is really, really common among like the Kenmore Whirlpool Maytag variety. So the top rack, what people notice is that it kind of starts falling down on one side and they'll notice that one of the wheels has come off. So the design for, you know, hundreds of models they came out with, the way that the wheels are attached is just kind of like a really kind of dinky, thin little plastic clip. And so they will eventually break off, especially if you have hard water, it wears out faster. And for a lot of those, they actually have a kit that you can order uh, online. And it's, it's a very simple repair. Um, you could save a lot of money doing it yourself. And the new updated upper rack wheel and adjuster kit, it's got a lot more metal, it's a lot more sturdy, and and that'll actually last. Typically, for any repair, if you take your model number and go to somewhere like Sears Parts Direct, you can find the part number that you need and then put it on eBay, Amazon, whatever, to, to get it a little cheaper. Mm -hmm. And when you do that for the upper rack, even if you just put in maybe the part to the wheel or something, it'll actually come up with the part number to the kit. And so if, if your dishwasher falls in that category, definitely go ahead and get the kit. It, it's worth it. It replaces, you know, both sides of it. And you won't have any more trouble with it. That's a real common failure. Fantastic, yeah, and, and can sort of solve the the issue of something being really stubborn every time you're trying to take it out, and your glasses are shaking and knocking against each other and everything. Oh yeah, yeah. And is the kit like just essentially like a full rack replacement, or is it just the wheels? So yeah, it's just the wheels. It's essentially where you've got your wheels, and then you kind of have the sim assembly that the wheels attach to, and then they attach on either side of the rack. Mm -hmm. And so it, it pretty much comes with everything from the pieces that attach on the rack, the wheel assembly, the kind of locking assembly. When you take it off, you just have a rack. So it comes with everything that connects to it. Gotcha. A worthwhile, worthwhile replacement if you've got trouble with those wheels. Oh yeah, yeah. This one. We'll wrap this one up, and uh, hopefully we helped, helped anyone listening to, to find uh, solutions for any issues you're having with your dishwasher. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, well, we'll close it out. Um, cheers. See you later.